Hi, this week we want to talk about another cognitive bias that you may have experienced and it's called the halo effect. Uh, so as you might expect, it's named uh, because it's an analogy with the religious concept of a, a glowing circle that might appear at the top of a, a person's head, like a saint or something like that, and it would uh, bathe the saint's head in some type of a heavenly light. So this halo basically goes around and, and encompasses the person uh, that, that has it. So in, in our uh, application area and in business, what happens is an observer may overestimate the worth of something that it's observing uh, by the presence of a quality that adds light on it, like a, a whole light, like a halo adds light to it. So, for example, if you're looking at a product that maybe has a certain brand associated with it, because of your feeling about that brand, the brand carries a halo and it will impact your feelings about the uh, particular product. So what happens in that context is that the observers or the people who are, are looking at this and making judgments, they uh, actually may skew their judgments and, and generalize towards a broader, better judgment because of that halo effect. So it's present, um, and we'll talk about some experiments that have been done to confirm it. So in the first experiment, college students were participants. They were asked to evaluate a psychology instructor, instructor as they viewed him in a videotaped interview. So the instructor was to be evaluated on, on several different uh, dimensions. And the students got divided into two groups, and each group was shown one of two different interviews with the same instructor. Now that instructor is a native French-speaking Belgian who spoke English and had a fairly noticeable accent. In one video, the instructor presented himself as someone likable, respectful of his students' intelligence and motives. He was flexible in his approach to teaching and really enthusiastic about the subject matter. In the other interview he did, he presented himself in an entirely different way. He was very unlikable, cold and distrustful uh, towards the students, and very rigid in his teaching style and what he expected of the students. After watching the two videos, the student subjects were asked to rate that lecturer on physical appearance, mannerisms, and his accent. And uh, both both videos the, had the same type of mannerisms and accent, so they kept that exactly the same between the two subject groups. So the results of the experiment were that after viewing the experts, the subjects were asked how much they think they like the teacher. And the subjects were rating him on an eight-point scale, something like, um, I really like, extremely like him, or I distream, uh, dislike him extremely. And then the subjects were told that the researchers were interested in knowing how much their liking for that teacher influenced the ratings they just made. So let's think about that for a second. How much did the ratings that they, give that, that they gave their, that teacher, based on the video that they watched, how much of how much they liked that uh, teacher uh, influenced those ratings? So just whether they liked that person or not, not the quality of teaching per se, but this likability type of thing. So other subjects were asked to identify then how much the characteristics they just rated uh, influenced their liking as well on both different videos. And surprisingly, after responding to the questionnaire, the students, when it was discussed with them, they were very puzzled about their reactions to the videotape and the questionnaire items. And what the, the issue was here, not the ratings that they gave or the, the way the, the experiment played out and what was taught or what was valid, but the student had no idea why they gave one lecturer higher ratings. They couldn't discern the fact that that attitude or that difference in being conveyed in those videos was creating what we now call the halo effect. So one characteristic of this cognitive bias is that you're doing it, but you don't even realize that you're, you're uh, bringing it to bear. It just happens to you, and you'll be surprised by the fact if someone calls it out to you, um, maybe you'll totally disagree with it, but it still does occur. So the applications of this in business, it's, it's per they're pretty broad. 
Um, uh, our marketing specialists make use of associations to well-known brands or names to make their product appear better. So for example, if you're marketing a, a pair of jeans, it may be made in the same factory as another pair of jeans, but because you lend that brand to that pair of jeans, you can, uh, a designer name type brand, you can add a lot of value and charge more for those jeans. So that's a halo effect leveraging the brand. So what's fascinating again about this is you may be aware of and you understand this halo effect, but you really don't have an, any idea when it's happening. And it happens around you all the time. When you go to the grocery store and you, you pick something off the shelf, it could be the halo effect at, at play. Uh, without realizing it, we make these judgments. And even when it's pointed out to us, we'll deny that that's a product of that halo effect. So let's look at some other business areas and, and some specific examples. And one area I'd like to mention is cinema. So if you think about the movies, your favorite movies, or the, the ones that you are looking forward to watching at the theater soon, they usually depict their lead role characters to be handsome or beautiful or in some way very compelling. Now, that may not be the true of all the, the Marvel movies and things like that, but in many instances it really is. We, we make our characters in those movies the epitome of being smart and confident and maybe think of um, like the James Bond movies, the character and the brand that they've created about that. They're definitely playing into the halo effect uh, in, in helping us create that hero within that cinema context. The other thing that, that I want to mention is that um, the halo effect doesn't, doesn't just um, happen to humans. So, I mean, it, doesn't, it isn't always when you're looking at something that, that it's a human you're looking at. It could be an object. And like I used the example of the pair of jeans before. Um, but the marketers do other things to make these objects appear more desirable. So um, let's say you want to go to the grocery store and, and buy some soap. And maybe you want something with a fragrance associated with it. And, uh, you know, if you don't really give a lot of importance to product pricing and there might be a lot of those soaps on the market, um, then what happens we see is that people will buy that soap uh, based on the, the beauty or the presence of certain types of packaging. Because somehow we think if it's packaged better or more to our liking, then the soap will be better. Another example is uh, when you go to visit a restaurant. Now, you may have two different options to go to, and in many cases, you'll probably choose the, the place with the best ambience and, and look. Uh, so let's think about those words, a, a restaurant and the ambience and the look, and really what you may want is a quality of food, and even if the quality of food is the same, um, having that word uh, ambience associated with it in your mind will create this, this halo effect. Another thing is if you price goods too low, um, then people may assume that it's got low quality. Uh, so it kind of goes against that, some of the regular laws of supply and demand. And, and if you uh, price things high, then it could be perceived of as that's an expensive product, therefore it's of much higher quality and, and much more desirable to own it. So in the world of advertising, we know any product that's backed by a well-known brand or a brand ambassador, for example, your, your favorite sports champion or uh, movie uh, actor or actress is uh, out there promoting it, then that halo effect is, is at play in how the marketers are advertising that product. Another area well, it, where it's really important to think about, and this is one we're going to extend into your assignment is related to jobs and hiring and also performance of reviews that you might be uh, giving all of the personnel when you become a manager. One thing you have to remember is that you can't assume that your first impression is, is the lasting impression that you have. So that's applicable in job hiring where you might assume that, that a candidate's character uh, has a certain uh, uh, flexibility or high quality uh, depending upon or, or given the fact of how they might dress or how they look. Um, there's, uh, you can't judge a book by the covers is, is something that comes to mind. 
So that the truth is that some of the, the most favorable qualities that person could have really can be found out only through frequent interaction, well-designed job interviews, and maybe even through uh, work experience or trying people out in settings where you can see how they perform. So you might use um, uh, stress interviews, um, bringing the, the person to work with other employees and having them interact. That gets you beneath that exterior and into the details so that you don't just rely on the halo effect. Another thing is when you're, when you're going to promote somebody, like in evaluating uh, their job performance, you really should probably get multiple ratings from different supervisors and, and maybe get an average of their ratings. But in other words, create somewhat of a 360 degree performance appraisal so that, that your, your in, in, inherent cognitive bias or halo effect won't just uh, won't impact how you're viewing that person as well as how you rate them uh, against some of the other people who, who work for you. So this is a really important thing to keep in mind in human uh, resource management. Another area where we see this is in politics. So as, as you know, choosing the best political leader is not always easy and you need to really practice some caution uh, before you elect your leader. And what you want to check for is the past political performance, the success rate, how they voted on things before to see um, exactly which way they might lean when future issues come up so you can be a better judge. And oftentimes we're caught up in the, um, the advertising and the branding and the way that the candidate is created in the media uh, that helps us shape our, our decision making where we really need more evidence to take a look. Um, next, in the judicial system, you really wouldn't want the jury to decide on how people look or, or how, what clothes they wear. You really need things like um, lie detector tests and stress interviews and, and uh, actually seeing them testify, if that's possible, in order to give a fair judgment. So you don't want to just uh, pay attention to that halo effect and maybe what the, the other lawyers, the advocates for a defendant are trying to create when you render a, a very strong evidence-based um, uh, type of decision. Um, I think uh, there's been some modern additions to this uh, area uh, of research related to the halo effect and one of the things that has been found is, for example, your mood can really uh, affect the degree of the halo effect. So um, uh, I said too many effects in that sentence, but basically it's that uh, if you're in a bad mood, you may judge something, uh, the same brand, the same pair of genes, in a different way than if you're in a really good mood. So mood probably has some influence on this halo effect. Additionally, when you're asked to, to list the happy times in your life, uh, you get to see the halo effect as, as perceptions of participants may change. So, for example, even in circumstances where uh, people had bad memories, they tend to be able to uh, produce a halo effect over those memories and, and uh, make them uh, more meaningful and, and instead of all as negative as, at the, as they might have been at the time, they have more of a meaning in one's life. Um, so be sure that when you're, you're thinking of this halo effect, you, you also consider this newer research that says your emotional state probably will have a big impact on making a judgment. So if you're having to make a big decision on purchasing one house or another, maybe take a little bit of time, make sure that in, over a couple of days you're in different moods when you evaluate that evidence. So how do you get after this bias? How do you deal with it uh, and, and avoid it? Well, one thing that, that you need to remember is that the object that you're evaluating can get blurry uh, in your eyes and that's what makes the halo effect work. It means you're not looking through crystal lenses uh, or eyeglasses at the object to make a clear and informed position. So never make uh, presumptions when the main object or personality can't be clearly seen. You need to get into the details. Uh, one saying I like to remember is that all that glitters is not gold and all that sparkle uh, are not diamonds. So keep a clear, conscious mind and that'll help you make the best judgment. 
Um, in align with this, using evidence or, or breaking out your evaluations of employees, for example, using something like a spreadsheet model can help ensure that you don't fall for this halo effect. So stop and think. Next time you vote for a politician, you're going to buy that pair of designer jeans, or if you like somebody who's working for you versus uh, their, their performance may not be that good, ask yourself if that halo effect is operating on you. Think if you're evaluating the traits of the person or the product uh, as you think you are, because you, you might be fooling yourself. That was found in the research. Um, in the halo effect, something global, some global aspect will bleed into your judgment and, and tend to cloud it. So a simple taking a, a, a few minutes to check uh, could save you from voting for the wrong person or wasting your money or rejecting somebody who could be a loyal employee or friend.